All right. Who enjoyed that digital breakout from Matt? It's always so entertaining to watch him just like chill and code and do his thing. So if you are seeing the session in a little window in your browser and you couldn't make it full screen, it's because you have not done one of two things. All right, ready? Write this down. One, register mybuild.microsoft.com. Second, sign in. So if you registered, sign in. Then you'll be able to see it full screen and not have it in a little window with you know, all sorts of other distractions. Okay, so we love C-sharp, that was super fun. And if you wanna see more from C-sharp, please do check out Microsoft Learn for courses and certifications. They're all free and there's a whole bunch of C-sharp ones that I thought were really, really interesting. Now, let's transition from C-sharp to the cloud. We're gonna bring in our first remote host of the day. Please welcome our friend and colleague, Burke Holland. Burke, over to you. Hey, Donna, thank you so hey. much. Hey, everybody, welcome. Uh, we figured you might need a break from Seth, so you get me. You're you're so welcome for that. My name is Burke Holland, and I'm coming to you live from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, very exciting. Hello to all my people in the region. Feel free to admire my Lego village here throughout the session. Uh, all of my retirement and 401k is wrapped up here. And this session, this segment is called The Bleeding Edge of Modern Web Apps on Azure. So dramatic, so extreme. Um, big announcement this morning, Azure Static Web Apps, a brand new service that was just released today. Very exciting stuff. And with me for this segment, I've got two of the folks who work on the team that designed and built Azure Static Web Apps. We have Daria Gregoriou, Principal Program Manager for Azure Functions, and Mitch Webster, Senior Engineering Manager on the App Service Team. Welcome, folks. Hey, Burke, thanks for having us. Awesome. Now I figure we'd just jump right in. And for the uninitiated, what is Azure Static Web Apps? Azure Static Web Apps is a new offer in the App Service portfolio hosting full stack JavaScript modern web apps. These are modern web apps with a static front end and with an optional dynamic back end powered by Azure Functions representing serverless APIs. Why don't we um, take a look at it? And you can actually see it live. That would be awesome. Nothing like a good demo to kick things off. So um, the first thing that um, I want to tell you about static web apps is just how easy it is to get started. And here uh, we have the screen to create one of these uh, static web apps. And we ask for very little information. We um, ask for um, your research group, and then we ask for a name. And um, I'm going to uh, call this STEM demo light. Uh, we ask for a region, and this is used to provision your Azure functions in your pre-production environments. And then we just link to your GitHub repo. I'm asked to sign in with GitHub. I can select my repo here. And this is also called STEM Demo Live. And I can select a branch that I want to associate with my, my production environment. I can double check my build settings, review, and create this resource. You can see the creation is in progress. And as we create the resource, we're also generating a workflow for GitHub Actions that is going to deploy my code from GitHub to the cloud. I can go to the resource, and I have a very deep connection with GitHub right here, where not only do I see my resource URL, Greenstone, but also I can see um, direct links to my GitHub Action runs and to my workflow that was just generated and placed in my GitHub repo. Here in the workflow, you can see we have some options that describe configuration for how we would build and deploy for the static content and the functions, as well as an option to specify the output of my build. Looking at the repo, we have both the static content available right here. In this case, it's a React-based app. And we also have functions. And in this particular demo app, it's the functions that help me retrieve specific content for the different areas of learning. If we go back, we can look at the status of our GitHub Actions in real time. 
you can see that our workflow to build and deploy right now is in progress. So let's uh, go right to uh, this app that was actually pre-deployed and uh, look at the output of my actions um, as they show when they're completed. You can browse to the resource and uh, here it is just displaying uh, simple demo content that is actually generated by functions, as I mentioned. You can also see that in the Azure portal right here, um, you can see the functions that I deployed. And um, you can see um, also elements of configuration, in this case, app settings, which I am um, retrieving with my functions. So the value that I specified is stem learning demo. If I go back here, this is exactly the value that we're displaying, stem learning demo. What else might you need to get this production ready? Well, uh, you may need a custom domain. So here, I've actually configured a custom domain, stem learning XYZ. We can uh, browse to it. And one thing that I would call your attention to is HTTPS by default. So um, the other thing to mention is when you configure uh, custom domains, then um, you um, get an, a cert, a free cert that is provisioned by the platform. So it's really easy to do that. Um, what else might you need uh, to get this production ready? You may need a form of um, authorization and authentication. So here um, I have some gated content that you can see I'm not actually allowed to access, but I could log in with a provider of my choice, in this case, GitHub. And now I am able to see my gated content. It says, welcome to your gated content demo. In the portal, just going back, uh, you have this role management option and you can see uh, Mitch also is a contributor. So Mitch, do you want to talk about uh, this feature? Yeah, that sounds great. So as Daria mentioned, uh, a lot of the features that are built here are little tools that you can use to simplify your app um, and your development experience. Uh, oftentimes we see that authorization and authentication are a hard problem. Um, so this is our uh, feature that we try to provide to simplify this experience. Um, so if we actually go back to Daria's screen, we can see that um, you can invite users, you can assign them different roles. Um, these roles are completely up to you. Um, so you might have a uh, admin role, or if you're building an application for a uh, library, you might have a librarian role. Um, it really depends on your application. So you have total flexibility here. Um, we offer a, a couple of different providers for doing this. Um, once you log in with those providers and are given these roles, then you have that access. Um, so we, we have some great documentation on this that we'll share at the end, um, but this is a very simple way to introduce authorization and authentication into your app. Thanks, Mitch. One more feature that we want to point out is how easy it is to iterate on your production. Um, now that uh, everything is live, maybe you don't want to iterate directly on the production environment that is available to customers. So we have created uh, a feature for pre-production environments. And with this feature, uh, when you submit a PR to your GitHub repo, we auto-provision one of these pre-production environments for you. So here uh, we have a pull request that Mitch already submitted. And when, um, we generate this pre-production environment. We also give you a very convenient link right here. In this case, we wanted to see what it looks like in dark mode. So um, now you have your pre-production environment that you can um, have at your fingertips just by submitting a PR. So um, uh, here we are back on the environments page. Mitch, do you want to um, talk a little bit about the PR? Yeah, and so as, as Daria said, a, a crucial part of the development workflow is actually bringing others into the project. Um, so because we have this tight integration with GitHub, we are using GitHub Actions. Uh, not only can you leverage the ecosystem of GitHub Actions and what's available there, but we also can listen for events like pull requests 
and that allows us to do cool things like provision a pre-production environment. We've all been in a situation where uh, a pull request comes in and you can look through the code to best understand. You might even pull it down and then test it, but this really streamlines it, that experience, giving you a live copy to play with and see uh, what, what the actual changes are. Thank you. Wow. So, uh, we just saw a lot there. And we I'm talked sorry, Daria, a did you want to, did I interrupt you talking about the docs there? Yes, we talked a little bit about getting started. So I wanted to point out we also have docs. Um, these are available for you. Uh, and here's a little summary for the links that you can use. AKMS, SY docs is a great place to start. And also we have links for our learn modules. Awesome. And for our production team, could you leave this slide up for just a minute for everyone to be able to copy these links down real quick? And while we do that, let's just jump straight to some really uncomfortable questions, uh, which is awesome. So let's just start with how much is it going to cost me? How much does it cost? For our public preview, we have a, a free plan. So we really welcome and encourage you to try this at no charge for hosting the static content and that includes global distribution as well nice it's a little risk-free experience i like it uh i'd like to mitch just get directly to some of the user questions i know I, we had some questions we were going to go through i'm jumping a little bit off script here i know you love it but dan h is wanting to know can static web apps be used with a repo that lives in a github organization that is not owned by the user uh, yes. So in order to create the, the initial link between a static web app and a repository, you need to have admin access. That is done on purpose so that people can't just create arbitrary links to your repositories. Um, but as soon as you have contributor access, you can start making pull requests. You can start uh, pushing commits that will actually then go deploy that content. So uh, you don't have to be an admin, but to start with, you do. Okay, nice. Uh, Daria, Andrew S. What's up, Andrew? Andrew would like to know, will the static web app preview work with .NET Core Blazor? This is a good question. We've seen this one a few times today. This is a great question. And uh, we are really focused on enabling a full stack development experience where we want uh, both front end and back end available for the development language so developers can reuse their language skills. And so we're definitely looking at uh, expanding our offer um, and uh, we totally appreciate and understand the interest in um, Blazor WebAssembly and the .NET stack. Awesome, Blazor's cool stuff, very cool technology. Mitch, I'd like to ask a question of my own here for a second, which is that I've been building static apps on Azure for a while now and using Azure Storage. Uh, what's different and why this new service for static web apps? Yep, it's a great question. Um, all of the tools that we're using are actually tools that are provided already by Azure. Um, a lot of the goals here are bringing those experiences together. So in the past, when we've used a variety of different services across Azure, it's kind of hard to manage, um, and it can be easy to it can be hard to get into for the first time. So a a big uh, goal of this project is to streamline that, make things as easy as possible, um, and really focus on what are the uh, tools that developers need to be building these applications? So routing, authorization, uh, Git, GitHub integration, uh, all of these things are things that you could build yourself um, through Azure components, but it would be difficult and probably time consuming. Right, so I, I guess one of the things that stands out about this service to me is that these things, you can actually do all of this in Azure. You could before you do most of it, a lot of it, but you had to assemble all these pieces yourself, the deployment, the CI, CD, uh, the API, but this service ties all of those things together into one package that just works for static web apps. Exactly, yeah. Which is very cool. All right, I think we got time. We got 30 seconds, maybe sneak one more question in here. Um, someone is asking, do I have to use GitHub or can I just deploy directly to this service? Is that possible? Yep, right now Today. we have this hard, oh, sorry, go ahead, Dara. Today we have uh, a deep integration with GitHub and GitHub Actions. Awesome. All right. Well, I think we're out of time here, so they're gonna they're gonna cut us off and send you back to the main show. So with that, 
We're going to go back to Donna. Donna, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Burke. Um, that was fascinating and amazing. I am no web dev, a C++ all the way, but even listening to that, I really, really want to go build an Azure static web app. So I'm going to do it. And when I run into all kinds of issues, I'm pinging you all. So next up, we're chatting through a topic that's been on the minds of just about every dev out there, productivity. We'll be right back. <laughs> 